Hey y'all, Erin here. It is a rainy Saturday afternoon where I live. And so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do something that I almost never do. I'm gonna go through all of my fiction bookshelves and weed through and maybe even get rid of some books so that I can fit the new books that I've been buying onto my shelf. The last time that I actually went through all of my books with intent to get rid of some was like 12 years ago. And I'm still like, if I could go back in time <laughs> and slap myself upside the head for that one, um, cause I'm still kind of mad at myself for getting rid of some of the books that I got rid of. I was in college at the time. I had very, very limited space cause I was in a dorm room or maybe an apartment. I can't actually remember exactly when it was. Um, but I was trying to be as adult as I possibly could. And so I got rid of a lot of my manga. Actually, I got rid of all of my manga and I have regretted it since then. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna pull the books off my shelf that I don't think I wanna keep and I'm going to set them in a box and I'm gonna put that box in my closet. <laughs> and if several months from now I'm still like, okay, I think we can let these go, then I will take them to Goodwill. Um, but I don't want a repeat of the regret. But at the same time, I, you know, I just, I don't have room for any more books and the economy is starting to bounce back from the pandemic. I am in a commissioned sales position in my, you know, day-to-day -day work life, which means my commissions are finally going back up, which means I'm buying more books. So it's time to sort through and let go. Um, so I'm also gonna kind of just walk you guys through my bookshelves as I do this. You're not going to be able to see this corner down here. These books, my fiction books are in my bedroom. My bedroom is very small. There is in fact only about 18 inches between the end of my bed and the bookshelves. Um, so there's just nowhere I can put my camera to make that corner visible. It is what it is. <laughs> So, we're gonna start up with the A's. Um, so, Edward Abbey is not mine. Those are my husband's and I can't get rid of any of my husband's books, even when they're written by misogynists and I don't like them. Um, Douglas Adams, I will never get rid of. Little Women, I have two copies of Little Women because one was mine and one was my husband's. I don't think I need two copies. So I'm gonna keep, I think this one's a little bit cuter. It's got a more fun spine. It kind of goes with, he actually had a copy of Little Men, which I haven't even read. Maybe I'll read it one of these days. So next up we have Sherman Alexi. I know that there was, he came up as a Me Too issue. Um, the thing is I really like the Lone Ranger and Tonto fist fight in heaven. <laughs> so I'm not going to buy more of his books. I'm not gonna give him more of my money, but I am gonna keep that one for now and maybe I'll feel differently later. Um, after that, I've got Piers Anthony. These are the Incarnations of Immortality series. I used to have like 20 or more of the, the Xanth books plus another series that he wrote and that was one of the ones that I got rid of the last time I ran out of space and I'm still mad about it. So I'm definitely not getting rid of these. I'm still missing <laughs> the last book in this series. It's very hard to find. Um, behind those, I have a stack of Isaac Asimov. These are actually my brother's books, um, and I'm 
kind of holding them for him, but also like do intend to read them. Cause I don't think I've ever actually read any of Asimov's work. So that's on my to do. Let's see, Margaret Atwood, Handmaid's Tale, not getting rid of that. And then we have Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters. Those were kind of joke gifts, but I think they're funny, so I'm keeping them. Um, and then, oh, I've also got Dawn of the Dreadfuls. And apparently I didn't have enough room for that one because it was tucked behind. So let's see, and then we have some of my, we've got Austin. What is this? A patchwork screen for the ladies. This was one that I read as part of, I think part of my capstone in college. I do have a, a lit degree. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep that. I may never actually read it again, but I, it's kind of nostalgic. Ray Bradbury. Oh, okay. So here, this is the first, this is gonna be tough for me. I, I loved The Mists of Avalon. When I first, I was in junior high when I read it. You know how everyone's got those genres of book that sort of define them as a reader? For me, it's vampire novels and Arthurian legends. But ever since I found out that Marion Zimmer Bradley probably sexually abused her own children and allowed her husband, to, who was a known pedophile, to abuse other kids, I just, I don't know if I'll ever be able to read this book again with the kind of love that I had for it before. So this is going to come off of my shelf for now. It makes me very sad. Um, all right, Bronte, Brooks. Of course, never getting rid of the zombie survival guide. I actually wrote a paper on that one in high school. I had to pick a nonfiction book and the zombie survival guide is in the nonfiction section of the library. So that was what I picked. And my teacher was a little mad about it. <laughs> because he thought I was sort of breaking the rules, but he couldn't argue with me because it's nonfiction. So that's another book I'll probably never get rid of for sentimental reasons. Let's see, Clockwork Orange. Oh, and then these. So this is, we've got the annotated Alice in Wonderland. This one is not annotated, just Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Um, I will, I'm not getting rid of these, but I am going to move them downstairs because that's where I keep my children in middle grade books. I think these would be more appropriate down there. And that's the end of the first shelf. Wow, look at all the room I've got already. Um, so moving on, Don Quixote, definitely keeping that, The Awakening, I mean, who with a degree in women's literature, or women, <laughs> I have a degree in women's studies, gender studies and literature, so obviously I'm keeping The Awakening from now until forever. I picked this one up at the grocery store on an impulse because the story sounded fun. And then I got to the incest at the end and I was like, ew, yuck, done with that. But then I never got rid of it. So that one, I don't feel the need to hold on to. I don't think I'm gonna regret giving that to Goodwill. Okay, and the next we've got one of my brother's books. We've got Michael Crichton. I don't actually know if those were my brother's or my husband's, but <laughs> Agatha Christie, um, except it's in Spanish. I don't know why I have it in Spanish. I do not speak or read Spanish. 
so we can probably get rid of that one. <laughs> and behind those, it's the House of Night series by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. And I think I've read the first four books in this series, like, twice, and never made it past that. I picked them up when I lived in an apartment. They were on the free pile in the laundry room. And as previously mentioned, I do love me some vampire novels. I'm not picky. I don't care if they're good. These aren't good. <laughs> but I've kept them for ages. I think it's time to just accept that I'm never going to make it all the way through this series and we can just let them go. Oh, it's looking so empty now. All right. Uh, the Alchemist, Canterbury Tales, Heart of Darkness, not getting rid of those. Dracula's Brood, Vampire Classics by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, M.R. James, and others. This one, again, I kind of define myself as a reader of vampire stories, but I've never actually I've had this book for probably 10 years and never opened it. I'm keeping it anyway. I can't quite bring myself to get rid of that one yet. Let's see. The Lays of Marie de France. I read this one for a medieval literature class so many jokes about what is a lay? It's a short romance. <laughs> I have to keep it just for the joke. I have to. Let's see, Philip K. Dick. That is one I got my husband for Christmas. Who knows if he'll ever actually read it. He usually does audiobooks, but I still buy him books constantly because that's what readers do, right? can't actually tell what this is other than a cool looking book. Oh, the works of Arthur Conan Doyle all in one volume. That's cool. I didn't even know I had that. Wait, Doyle would come after Dickens, but before Dostoevsky. So I actually like A Christmas Carol. I don't like Oliver Twist. Apparently I paid one whole dollar for this book. I don't know. We'll put this in the maybe I'll just get rid of it pile. Feels weird to do to a classic, but Let's see, Dostoevsky, Duncan, that's not mine. That's another one that's not mine. Okay. A staggering work of heartbreaking genius. Someone gave this one to me after they finished it because they thought it was just the greatest thing ever and I hated it so much I threw it across the room and yet I have kept it for mm, mm, 12 or yeah, 12 or so years now. I think we can let it go. Let's see. Middlesex, Faulkner, Fielding, Forrester. Yeah, we'll keep all of that. George Eliot. I have to admit, this is another one that I have never actually read. It is water damaged. I've had it since junior high even maybe. So maybe we can finally let that one go and just admit that I'm not going to read it. So here's another one where I have two copies of the exact same thing. Um, but in this case, they're both so pretty. And the funny thing is, I think my sister-in-law actually gave me both of them. Because <laughs> she knows that I'm into the fairy tales. And I'm not getting rid of either of them because they're both pretty copies. 
what is this? It's another one with no, nothing on the spine. White Oleander by Janet Fitch. I have no idea what this is, so I'm going to assume it was probably my husband's, which means I can't get rid of it, so. Okay, now we're onto the bottom shelf. Let me try and adjust so that you can sort of see-ish. We'll start with the books I have tucked behind here. <laughs> the Everything Spanish Practice book. Um, and <laughs> Relox Latin because I took Latin in college. Am I ever going to use these again? No, probably not. Am I going to get rid of them? No, probably not. I mean, your bookshelves aren't just about what you're gonna read, right? They're about what you want people to think of you as a person. And I want people to think of me as a, the sort of nerd that may someday take up Latin again. Plus, sometimes it's just handy to know where words came from and to be able to look it up and I'm justifying. I'm not getting rid of them. <laughs> okay, so here's Gaiman. Not getting rid of any of that, of course. Not even a Nazi Boys, which I didn't manage to finish, but someday I will. yellow wallpaper that's another one that you know no self-respecting feminist is going to get rid of the yellow wallpaper tess of the ubervilles and jude the obscure okay Whoop. hi sweetie are you gonna help are you here to help me organize <laughs> this is mia she's a helper always much for moving the camera so that you could see. So this is a shelf that I actually need to make room on because I have Angel Maker and Gnome in here by Nick Harkaway and I lent out my copy of The Gone Away World which is probably one of if not my favorite book it's in my top five and I don't even have space for it on the shelf right now. Mia hi sweetie can you maybe hang out somewhere else? Can you hang out somewhere else? Uh, <laughs> some of my Edward Gorey. This one's so much fun. It's a book told in playing cards and you can arrange the story as you wish. I love it. It doesn't really fit in a shelf well, but I leave it sitting on top. All right. Ooh, Deborah Harkness. I know a lot of people hated Discovery of Witches, but I loved it. Scarlet Letter. Oh, Beneath the Wheel and Siddhartha. I loved those books in high school. Catch 22. Hemingway. Dune, October Sky, The Iliad and the Odyssey. Yeah, I can't get rid of any of these. <laughs> Excuse the dust. Oh. Okay, apparently I have two copies of The Scarlet Letter, so maybe we can go ahead and get rid of one of them. What else is back here? <laughs> the only Laura K. Hamilton that I bought in paper. This book was not good. I think we can put it in the maybe, maybe we don't need to keep that one. I still have all of the rest of them as digital copies. Like I don't want it to come off as, it's sounding like I have better taste in books than I do. I have trash taste in books. I just didn't particularly care for that story. Let's see. Their eyes were watching God, Ulysses. Oh. I didn't get 
any more room on this shelf. <laughs> and this was the shelf I needed room. Oops. Okay, let's adjust a little again. So we're gonna get into the territory where it's harder for you guys to see, but it is what it is. I need to make room for this series. It's the three body problem, the dark forest and death's end. So I'm gonna put it, actually a pile of books over here that I need to make enough room for. And they're all, let's see, J. Probably actually need to fit into this shelf somewhere. Um, all right, again, these are some of my brothers. So I'm not getting rid of those. Ursula K. Le Guin, Left Hand of Darkness. That's one that actually needs to be fitted in here properly. Let's see. Okay, so it's Robert Jordan. <laughs> And Tracy Hickman. That's all my brothers. The Dark Half by Stephen King. The first time I read this book, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And the second time I read it, I thought it was absolute garbage. <laughs> so maybe we'll put that in the I might let it go category. This Stephen King on the other hand husband, so we'll keep that. Uh, Kerouac and Marjorie Kidman. One for the cuckoo's nest. We gotta keep that. The Historian. This is one of my favorite books. This is not. This has got to be one of my husband's because I don't recognize it, but what is going on with that cover? <laughs> Hidden behind those, we have the Dorinda Jones uh, This is probably one that we can put in the I might consider getting rid of them. Uh, I'm missing the fifth and sixth one. They were silly, they were fun, they were not good. But that was another like impulse grocery store purchase. <laughs> uh, and then all of this, these are all Mercedes Lackey books and I will not get rid of them. I will not apologize for my love of Mercedes Lackey either. I think, no, these just have a, a deeply nostalgic spot in my heart. At D.H. Lawrence, Herbert Lee, Phantom of the Opera. Nope, none of those. Not getting rid of any of those. Okay. How many copies of La Morte d'Archer do you think I need? <laughs> the problem is that this is the Norton Critical Edition, but I like the cover on this one better. Gosh, I need to dust my books more often. All right, I'm gonna put this one it in the maybe maybe we don't need to keep them both Let's see what oh now these these I think I can get rid of. I feel like I can safely say I, it's all the Twilight books. It's not all. I think I only have the first three. 
I read them because they were the hot thing to read when I was in college. They are trash. this one I know Paige Orwin I went to high school with her she self-published this my mom bought it because she knew that I went to high school with her my mom read it she said it was not very good I guess it's fan fiction of a video game or something sorry Paige we were in the creative writing club together, but I'm gonna be honest and say I'm never gonna read that book. <laughs> All right, so then we have The Night Circus and Starless Sea. Those are two of my favorite books of all time. Beloved. <laughs> my stack of, this is all Christopher Moore. I adore his books. Yeah, no, we're not gonna get rid of any of those. One of these, ah, here it is. Is even signed and personalized to my husband. I actually got to meet Christopher Moore at a reading of, I don't remember which book, but I had him sign this one. Never getting rid of those. <laughs> okay. And then we have the Norton Anthology of English Literature, Volume F and Volume D. I had, must have had to buy those for a class. I don't think we need to keep them. with responding to literature. And another bad, probably vampire novel. I don't think I even read this one. No, we'll just, we don't need to keep that. Finding that if I'm tucking them behind other books because I don't want anyone to know I have them, we probably just don't need to keep them. All right, and then we have the Murakami, Nabokov, Mutiny on the Bounty, ah, uh, Lagoon. I need to make more space here because I'm a little obsessed with Nebu 404 right now, so. Read the Room. The Hounds of the Morrigan. I bought at Half Price Books as an impulse. Aired the first quarter, it was not good. <laughs> All right, here's another example of a book that I hated, but I wrote my capstone on this book, The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe, and so I will keep this book for all time. <laughs> Let's see, Anne Rice, keeping Anne Rice, unapologetic about that one. And our last shelf here. So the very first thing on this shelf are all the Harry Potter books. And I know that J.K. Rowling is like a turfy gross mess. She has she has revealed herself to be really problematic. But I love Harry Potter. I'm gonna be a total hypocrite and I'm gonna keep those. I just don't think I can get rid of them yet. Let's see. Stevenson, Shelley. Okay, here's another. This book is also in Spanish. 
Maybe I was being really aspirational for a while because I did want to learn Spanish. I don't know. I have no explanation for that. All right, I'll get the Stein back. I'm gonna keep those because Steinbeck is my husband's favorite. Or Steinbeck, good lord. I don't think I've finished anything other than it's my semen, but. <laughs> Two copies of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Could probably get rid of one of those. We'll keep this one because it's got other stories in it also. Dracula. We'll never get rid of Dracula. Go first travels. So this one has a very soft spot in my heart because I actually got to go to Antarctica in 2010 as part of my undergraduate um, as a J-term course and I brought this one with me and read it in Antarctica. And I liked the book but even if I hadn't liked the book this would be another one that this book has been to Argentina and Antarctica, and that's pretty cool. Keeping that forever. Okay. Do you think we're ever gonna get the third one in the King Killer Chronicles? I'm mad about it, y'all. Mark Twain and Tolkien in this stack. Not getting rid of any of those. Oh, look, more Steinbeck. Okay. Maybe. Maybe we don't need two copies of Cannery Row and two copies of The Grapes of Wrath. Maybe. We'll put it in the maybe. Okay, all of the Vonnegut. Not going to do that. Picture of Dorian Gray. Once in Future King. The rest of it is Virginia Woolf. Not getting rid of any of that. Okay, let's and what else have I got hidden behind here? Spanish Dictionary, Learn Japanese in 30 Days, Italian Dictionary. Another Spanish Dictionary, Latin. Now this one's actually an English Dictionary. Mm, Viajes Fantástico. This was another Spanish. All right. Well, that's, that's the mess that I just made of my bookshelf. When I get everything back on here, maybe I'll just take a couple photos for you guys. I hope you weren't too bored. Stay safe out there, y'all. Now that I have everything reorganized, I wanted to take a moment and show y'all my new shelves. I do still have a pile of other people's books on the floor, but I did manage to get everything that belongs to me onto my fiction shelves. The couple of gaps that or on the shelves are places where I have books that have been lent out to other people. So unfortunately, I once again don't actually have any room for more books, new books, but everything's on here. So that's something. Sorry, don't have a lot of room for easy moving around here. 
So the gap here is because I have purchased the Poppy War, but it's just not here yet. I am happy that I don't have any more books leaning precariously on top of other things and out of alphabetical order. So that's a huge improvement, and I don't have anything hidden behind, like, truly hidden, not just tucked out of the way. There's still a couple of spots where things are tucked out of the way. Harry Potter is my only young adult still up here. Everything else, children, middle grade, young adult, has been moved downstairs. So that's an improvement. I just, there's just no way I could fit those onto my shelves downstairs. Still not happy with this stack. It is still out of order and just sort of random, but maybe I can fix that somehow later. And oop, that's it. That's the end of them. That's all the fiction. So this was a fun rainy afternoon project. Sorry about the sound quality. Um, there's just nothing really I can do to block out the noise of the wind and the traffic outside, but I hope that wasn't too boring for y'all. And, you know, drink lots of water, wear your masks, stay safe out there, everybody.